Come on in, everyone. Melissa. How's it going, Kamala? I'm good. How about Did yourself? You that relativity question worked out. I worked it out today with another student. I just want to make sure you got it. Yeah, I, I, I have to figure it out. 0.98% or? Yes. Yeah. That's cool. Anybody have any questions? It actually is time for class to start. Of course, so like I told you, this isn't, uh, we're not covering new material. I'm just here to answer any questions you might have regarding uh, practice tests and things of that sort. As you uh, hopefully have seen over the weekend, I've gotten quite a few grades updated and I'm still going with that. Uh, you guys have an exam uh, that you take basically at this 520, but you can take it as early as 435. I think I had some other people that arranged to take it a little earlier, a little later in a couple of cases. But anyways, uh, y'all will take it Wednesday. Uh, if you need a testing center, you can do that too, but you just need to let me know so I can uh, inform them and fill out all the paperwork and all that good stuff. I have a question. Yes, Haley. Um, I had, it was a while ago, but it was for the redo. <laughs> I just, I figured like you have had a lot going on, so I didn't want to bug you about mm -hmm. it. But um, I had finished the midterm redo, but I had finished a little bit after midnight. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I, I emailed it to you, but it like, I emailed the redo as well so that you knew that I had finished it. Right. Um, and I was wondering if there's any way that Let me pull I can... that up real quick. I, I should be able to find it. I, I think I even remember your name coming up uh, with that email. Yep, I got it. I yeah, could I, forward I'll it. count that as, as being on time. It's not a big deal. Thank you so much. I really <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah, that's no problem. Like I said, I, I I had some issues with that, and I've actually been taking them a couple of days late anyways. I, I couldn't take them much more than a couple of days late, but uh, if anybody turns them in now, I'm just going to you know take some points off for that but uh but other than that they'll still get credit for it awesome thank you you're welcome amy anybody else have anything i do yes um on canvas it still says chapter 36 homework was due yesterday is it still going to be due the 30th <laughs> yeah it should be i don't even know why that's still saying that but okay Let's see here. Uh, let me change it while I'm here with you. Okay. Yeah, then actually, this is weird. I don't know why it keeps doing this. So yeah, I'm going to change it while I'm here uh, in case something happened. That might be the issue. Let's see. I actually had one of my students took a during test the other day and come to find out it was my astronomy test. I don't even know how they got access to that in my physics class, but here we are. So... <laughs> Okay, so chapter 36. Hmm. So show up and why is it not it's not even showing everything? Ooh. Oh, there I am. Ooh. Yeah, that those both are supposed to be that, and they are not showing that. So let me fix that right now. That's not good. That's not helpful at all. So 36 has been moved. Let me see if anything else needs to be moved. Uh, I'm going to do this too. What the heck? And let me see what else. 14 and 15, are they set properly? Yeah, they're set to the four, uh, 30th. All right, so that should be good. Now let's see if it works. Okay, it said it was saved, so that should have worked, Brianna, hopefully. Uh That'll work. Let me know if you have, if you look in the grade book and you see that you have a different score in the grade book here on Canvas than you do over in my lab and mastering, let me know that and specifically exactly what assignment. 
I might have to manually put it over. I've had some uh, grades not come over, uh, not from my lab and Matt, well, I have in the past, but not this semester, but I've had that happen with uh, other homework systems. So I always try to keep an eye on that. And in fact, you, you might not realize it, but I'm, I'm very OCD about the grades. So like uh, what'll happen is on the night of the 30th, I'll download all the grades from my lab and mastering, and then I'll literally compare them one by one. Then I'll make up my own spreadsheet, create my own grades, make a, a basically an algorithm that'll can't uh, get rid of the lowest X number of scores. And then I compare that to this to the hundredth place, basically, uh, with the canvas grade. And if they don't agree, then uh, I try to find out where the error is. So I, I do go through all that sort of process just to make sure that my grades are reliable. That being said, still, you, you know. You can still make a mistake every now and then. So let me know if y'all see anything that's missing. I'll take care of that. And just keep an eye on your emails. Uh, because as I as I make new grade changes, I try to send out an email that you, that you guys know. So Anybody? chapter yes. 9 and 10 uh -huh. was due uh -huh. last night. Chapters 9 and 10. Let's see. Test. The test. Oh, yes, yes. Chapter 9 and 10 was due, but the other ones are due on the 30th. Uh, did you miss I it? I thought it was just the practice test. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I, uh, I had the same okay. issue with my other class, so I'll open it up another day. There's going to be a deduction for being late, That's but fine. it'll be a small deduction. So uh, at least you won't get a zero. That'll be the main thing. Okay, so I will thanks. do that. And, and actually, it's, it's probably a couple students because I know I had three in my other class. And that, ju that just happens. So. Thanks. Yeah. I, th I thought it was just the practice test. Oh, well, actually, no, you're right. Uh, no, you, you actually got a little bit of time. Uh, I made I moved and made yours uh, for 9 and 10 is due April 25th. So you still got more time. Oh, OK. So the erroneous is wrong and the correct. Yes, right. yes. Okay. And I thought I took it down. So if it's still showing, that's one of those freaks of, of campus that keeps stumping me. <laughs> <laughs> where my students take a astronomy test and, and by mistake. I have a question. Yes, go for it. Um, I was looking in the syllabus and I didn't see anything, so I wanted to ask, is there a minimum grade that we have to have for the lecture to pass the class? I think you texted me that too, didn't you? Uh, I didn't text you. I sent you an email. Maybe that was it. Yeah. Uh, no, there's no no minimum like that I do for a class. Uh, <laughs> it's something I considered, but no. Uh, long as you uh, long as your grade works out, like I said, uh, based on the syllabus, uh, you're golden. Uh, okay. The one thing is that, of course, lab only counts like one in five. So in other words, it's 20 percent. So it's not a very good plan to try to let your lab pull up your lecture grade just because basically if you if you're one point shy of an A, for instance, say you got an 89, if you want to pull that up a whole point, you have to have a 95 mm -hmm. in lab just to bring that up one point. So, yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. Um, yeah no minimum. Uh, so, yeah, you're good. And then the test, the finals is going to cover, you said it before, but I just want to uh, verify chapters one through 11 and then 14 and 36. 14, 15, and 36. 15? Okay. Yeah. So on Canvas for the homeworks, um, maybe a lot of stuff is up there for like extra credit and stuff. Is that? Yeah. Anything outside of those credit? numbers is extra credit. So uh, I'll write them down here in the, in the chat. Okay. So after the test, if I come back to this to get some extra credit, I can do some of these other chapters. Yep. Okay, cool. Thank you. No problem. All right, so just put that there. 1 through 11, 14, 15, and 36 are the only ones required. All the others are completely extra credit. Uh, I've tried to give you plenty of dates on that, and, and that can give you a nice little buffer. I've had students do quite well as a result of their extra credit. So does anybody have any questions pertaining to course material or any other kind of stuff? Like I said, this is all completely student driven. So uh, if you don't have anything, it's not that big a deal. I did I notice. Well Go ahead. Professor Younger. Yes, John. All right. I lost my voice. So I might like my voice might be a little crackly. 
Oh, but yeah. um, um, the practice tests are an extra five percent for your grade, right? The like combined all of them. Yeah, and, and if you didn't do one, you get a zero for that one. Uh, but basically, then I average all those and divide it by twenty, and that many points is added to your final course grade. Okay, and then also for the homeworks, like if I did half of an extra credit for a homework and then half of the actual assignment, will will it equal out, or will like you only take the highest score of the two? It, it basically what I do is I just increase the number of dropped grades by one for every extra credit that I do. So if you got a grade and an extra credit that was lower than. Uh, one of your existing ones and it don't help you. But if you got, a, if you just got, you know, one point higher than one of your existing homeworks then it helps. Okay. So basically if I didn't want to do like one of the chapters, I wanted to do the homework one, the extra credit homework one, I could do that one instead of doing our actual like chapter 15, for example, or something yep. instead doing the extra credit for, I think like, I think it was like, um, I don't remember all the extra credit ones, but if I did the extra credit homework, it would just drop whichever one. It's lowest. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the other homeworks, the ones that aren't uh, my lab and mastering, if you did those, basically what I do is if, if I look at it, it looks like you essentially got it mostly right. Then I give you a hundred. If I realize that it looks like you might have left off some part, I'll say, hey, this isn't quite right and let you resubmit. And if you email me, let me know that you resubmitted it, uh, then I'll give you the 100. So you basically with those, you get 100 or nothing. OK, and how much does like the extra credit for that count for? They just count as erasing bad grades under your homeworks. The Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, the major part of the extra credit comes from the practice tests and stuff of that sort and little crazy things that I do when I go to look at your final course grade, see what's weighting you down. Okay, and then Wednesday is our final um, yes. test. And is it, can we start, you said an hour earlier? or You can start 30? like up, up to 45 minutes earlier. So normally 40. like... Uh, 430 435 somewhere around there you can start uh and that's just to make sure you can fit the two hours in by the either the end of class or by uh no later than the beginning of class and then i've got like like i said i, I do have one student i think it has to take it later on that night and i got another student has to take it in the morning but in general i can work with you on that but i normally make you up a, a different test okay cool thank you you're welcome and i did get your stuff about the labs by the way john Okay, thank you. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, on the uh, final exam, we're allowed to have is like many formula sheets as long as they're formulas that are in the book. Yeah, the uh, the ones that are numbered. So like I have thirty six dot you know twelve or something like that next okay. to it. it has that, then it's acceptable. Or if it's specifically one I told you about, like for instance, the conservation of energy equation I gave you guys. Uh, is not in the book at all. So you can have that. You can't have uh, sentences. You can't have the names of equations. I do not mind. Uh, for instance, if you write uh, omega is angular velocity, that, that would be acceptable. But I can't have you write in equation names because sometimes I'll literally ask you a question like state Newton's second law. And if you've got the equation name written down there, that kind of <laughs> defeats the purpose. All right, thank that you. sheet be front and back. I uh, you can be front and back. It can be two sheets. It can be three sheets. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't really mind too much if you over. You know, if you do a lot more than you, uh, than one page, it's not a big deal. As long as you only have the ones that you're allowed to have. Anyone else? By the so, way, uh, your moments of inertia, uh, either that table will be given or it'll be stated in the problem what the moment of inertia is. I think Kamna was getting ready to answer, ask a question, or it might have been Taylor. It was Taylor. Um, so, like, when I was making my formula sheet, I was, like, sometimes, like, I would write the stuff that was in the brackets next to it, because a mm -hmm. lot of times that would like say like oh basically this is the only situation where that applies can i right. not write the stuff in the brackets or uh so like there's 
there's one where it says a uh, factor or not a uh, vector L is equal to vector R uh, cross vector P. And that's for a particle. Could no, I, that's, that's not a problem. I don't mind you writing that stuff. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't I think I, worry about names, like I said, literal names of a, of an equation or something. Okay. And then, so there was, I have parallel axis next to the parallel axis theorem one. I'm assuming I have to get rid of parallel axis or. Nah, that's not one I normally ask. So that would be fine. Okay. However, that is a, a very good problem. I, I, I helped a student with one today that had uh, basically a equilateral triangle. That was kind of neat. So y'all should try to work that out. They said a wire is bent into a equilateral triangle. Uh, the wire's length is 3A, and the mass is M or something like that. And they uh, then rotated about a vertex, and they want you to calculate the moment of inertia. That's a, that's a good problem. There's another moment of inertia one, too, that requires an integral. Uh, they give you a formula for the mass density or mass per unit length density. That's another good problem. I have a question. This coming. Yeah. Uh, this is about one problem uh, mm -hmm. that says um, is a baseball uh, foul, foul ball. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the problem I'm talking about? No, I don't remember that one, uh, but I can pull it up if necessary. Yeah. Uh, is it one of I the homework or right, practice test? Yeah, it was on uh, on my uh, online test. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I took it uh, many times. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the two answer, answers I thought was, you know, absolutely right. Right. I get I get it wrong. So I'm, I've am i been trying to, to work it, but it's still, uh, you know. Was it about momentum, it, uh, maybe? It's asking uh, what is the, the magnitude of the impulse, which is the momentum. Ah, okay, so, yeah, the, I'm just, I was trying to get that so I can figure out roughly what chapter we're talking about. So uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. Now, remember, there's two way or well, there's an infinity of ways, but there's two big ways to calculate impulse. One is the integral of F dt, but the other one's just literally the change in momentum. So if you do P equals or excuse me, change in momentum equals P final minus P initial, that's a uh, uh, very good and often the easiest way to calculate the impulse. So if that was what you're doing with, that might have been just something where they're expecting you to do that. That's what I did. Okay. So let's check it out. I'm going to try to pull it up now. So there's two problems. One is talking about a foul ball and the other uh -huh. one just saying a ball straight. Gotcha. So this is the one talking about the foul ball. Okay. That sometimes helps me even uh, figure out what the what it is. So this should be chapter nine. Just want to double check, make sure I had that right. So let's go here. Chapter nine. Ooh, this is weird. Okay, so let's do this. I just literally pulled up my question bank and it shows it's empty so that's that's just a, a wonderful happening i don't know how that actually occurred <laughs> <laughs> it's weird like i normally have to upload all my banks and this semester they all were like automatically there but then when i look for them they're not there so it's like it's using them from all the past courses i've had but i don't know where they are so it's, it's a mystery but i think i can find it this way so it probably should be in chapter six. So, or excuse me, test six. Got this. Okay, yeah, this should be pretty easy to find him. The batter hits a uh, 0.140 kilogram baseball. What is the magnitude of impulse delivered to the baseball? Does that sound like it? I'll read it again. It says a batter hits a 0.140 kilogram baseball that was approaching. No, it's not that one. Second. It's not that one. 
Okay. Yeah, that one say a batter hits a foul ball. Okay. Oh, here it is. A batter hits a foul ball. Same mass. A uh, batter yeah, hits a foul everything ball. Everything is the same. <laughs> let me see who he's trying to get in so I can let them in. All right. This one, let's see who's got you. So a batter hits a foul ball, the point one four zero baseball that was approaching him at 40 meters per second leaves the bat at 30 meters per second in a direction perpendicular to the line between the batter. Uh, uh, direction perpendicular. I can tell you, to the line I can tell you what, I, what I did so uh -huh. you can see what I did wrong. Yes. So I use, I use delta P equal M uh, uh, parenthesis VI minus VF. But I use VF as negative 30. Gotcha. Yeah. So it end up being 70, 40 plus 30 time 114, which gave me 9.8. Yeah. And that was listed as one of the possible answers. They're saying it's uh, 7.0 Newton seconds, just to let so, you know. Uh, let me see if I can work this out. So, uh, I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to write this information down first on my iPad, then I'll share the screen with you. So, uh, baseball's mass. Uh, baseball that was approaching him at 40 meters per second. So, V initial is equal to 40.0 meters per second. And leaves the bat at 30 meters per second. And a direction perpendicular to the line between the batter and the pitcher. Okay, so they're saying basically it's just at 90 degrees. Okay, so I think I got everything good enough now. So let me see if I can share my screen. Do you mind drawing... Like the picture of, because uh, I'm trying to understand the game. I've been well, on YouTube to see, you know. <laughs> it's not like cricket, I, right? I don't know baseball. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just like cricket, only the ball don't bounce first. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'll draw what you're doing. And in this case, it doesn't matter too much. I was I was trying to get uh, an idea of what they meant by perpendicular, but then I got to thinking about it. And it really doesn't matter. The fact that it's perpendicular is all that matters. So uh, let's move this out of the way. Sorry, I'm talking to myself about something here. Now I'm gonna do this. Hopefully this works. Taking a long time, but it seems to be. There you go. Okay, y'all can see that, right? Y'all see the graph yes. with the numbers up there? Okay. So uh, what we're going to say is basically, let's say the ball is initially coming this way. So this is VI. And obviously that is 40 meters per second. But... Now they're saying VF is this way, and that's 90 degrees. So that's really all that matters. Uh, it might be that the bat, we're looking at sideways, so it's popping straight up, or it might be that we're looking at the bat horizontally, and it's it's popping up or popping to the left or right. It doesn't really matter. That's the, that's the neat thing about it. So uh, delta P uh, is equal to the impulse. And what that is, is M times V final minus V initial. So V final would be that quantity minus V initial. We would write this way. Actually, that was supposed to be a different color. So that's negative V initial. So we now have them uh, sort of tail to tail. And what that means is, let's do this. So the final
that would be basically the direction of delta P. Because delta P is M times V final minus M times V initial. By me flipping the V initial backwards, I've basically done the equivalent of saying uh, V final minus V initial. So we can see this one is actually going to have a magnitude of, uh, oops, of 40.0 meters per second. And this one's going to have a magnitude of 30.0 meters per second. That's the three, four, five triangles, what they're really trying to get you to see here. So this delta P, at least magnitude, is going to be 50.0 meters per second. And you multiply that by 0 0.140, and that should give you the point, uh, give you the seven. So uh, delta P is equal to 0 0.14 zero kilograms times 50.0 meters per second. And you can see that uh, basically I can make this 14 kilograms times 0 0.50 meters per second, just so I don't have to do the math. And I immediately see that 7.00 Newton seconds. Does that make sense, Kamna? Yeah, I mean, numbers, yes, but, you know, reading the the problem. Yeah, I, it's I not that trivial. That, yeah, for, <laughs> to me, it looked like the ball went back to to the pitcher. Yeah, so that that's the thing. They were trying to, to say basically, hey, the, the ball's coming in on the path that's a line between the pitcher and the batter. Uh and that's that's sort of right. I mean, it's such a small period of time. Clearly, the ball is going to arc a little bit, but that's essentially good enough. And then nine degrees to that. Uh, so yeah, that that's that's how it works out. Hopefully, that's uh, a little clearer now. And I yes. am glad to say that they have the right answer for it. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? So we got lucky. They gave us a three, four, five triangle and they didn't ask us for, you know, any directions or anything like that. And as I said, this this could have been kind of complicated. But when you get to thinking about it, uh, the ball pops straight up, the ball pops perfectly horizontal or the ball pops any angle between her horizontal and vertical. As long as it makes 90 degrees with the incoming trajectory, then you've satisfied the, the conditions for the problem. So. That's why I, those of you just came in, and uh, that's why I drew the bat like that. I drew it as if you're looking at the end for just a circle, and then I drew it also as if you're looking at it from above as a shaft. So, anybody else have any other questions? Like I said, this is just a, a potential time for you to ask me questions. Uh, I'm going to, once I finish here, I'm just going to go back into starting uh, grading and making a, or actually posting the finals and all that good stuff. So you guys that have me on Mondays and Wednesdays, uh, we will have our final during regular class time. Or like I said, for those of you that are in my face-to-face -face class, they're allowed to start as early as 9 a.m. Uh, on Wednesday. And uh, those of you in my internet class, you're allowed to start as early as 4.30 unless you specifically ask me for a request and I'll make a different test for you. So anything else? Yes, was uh, chapter 43's conceptual and homework, was that extra credit? Yes. 
Uh, yeah, I wrote this uh, here on your chat. Basically, 1 through 11, 14, 15, and 36 are the only ones that are required. Anything outside of that is uh, is extra credit. Yeah, sir. Thank you. No problem. Anyone, have else? Any Anyone else? How many questions are on the final? Uh, I actually haven't made it. I've got some ideas and I've got a couple different versions I'm working with, but it's normally somewhere between 20 and 27, something like that. Sometimes I'll do as little as like 18 or 19, uh, but that obviously leads to problems where if you miss two, you're automatically out of an A category. So I try to keep it uh, lower level problems, except for a few difficult ones. And then it's easier to, to assign like 25 problems or something. Okay. No problem. Also, is there any type of curve on the uh, final? No, not really. Uh, unless, you know, it's all heck breaks loose and I find out that, you know, the whole class did horrible, then I then I have to reassess my, <laughs> my contributions to the class. Uh, but generally speaking, no, we, we don't do any, I've never had to do a, a uh, curve on the final, uh, but the final in some sense can make you or break you. So like if you've got a grade that's completely failing and you actually have no chance whatsoever mathematically to pass, the final is your chance to uh, pass anyways. So I, I do use the final in that sense where it's sort of more powerful than than even the syllabus would su suggest. So uh, literally at the end of the, of the grading period, when I look at all of your grades, I look and I'll say, okay, well, what's, what's, what's taking the students' grades and making them low? Is it, is it their homework grades? Because homeworks, I really, if I had my brothers, I'd not grade them at all. Uh, they're really supposed to be for you to try to figure out how to solve physics problems. So if I look and I see your homework grades are dogging you, then uh, I will sometimes completely throw that homework grade out and just take your average of your test grades. Uh, of course, I only do that if it improves your score. I can't do that if it uh, makes your score worse. And I do that for everybody. And also, if I look and I see, well, God, the student's got a you know a grade of a sixty-two, which is a D, but they took this comprehensive final, and I just looked at their video, and they weren't acting suspicious or anything. So uh, they got a ninety-eight on their final. Yeah, I'm probably going to give them an A. So uh, that happens. All right, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I try to I try to be fair. Uh, I'll, at the same time, I, I also want to, you know, teach students to be responsible and that sort of thing. But really, at the end of the day, if if you peak at the right time, which is the final exam on a comprehensive final, uh, when the, when a class offers that, then I definitely want to reward you. And uh, that's, you know, sort of your last best attempt to um, make everything right. So just do your best to to kick butt on the final, and 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 I can, you know, justify helping you a bit. I do. Are you saying? Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Are you saying that um you'll do that for the like individually, like take yeah. out the homework completely to help them? Okay, yeah, so I it won't be like everybody grade and, and try to work that out. Uh, okay, so you won't take the homework from everybody if you do it. No, no, no. and, and okay. I couldn't do that if it made anybody's grade lower. I would. I, I can't do that at all because that's that's really what the syllabus is. That's why I want you guys to really one uh, always, always, always read your syllabus, but two, always uh, learn how and and keep track of your grade yourself by doing your own calculations. Uh, because I, you know, instructors will make mistakes, and I've had really gifted and kind instructors make brutal horrible mistakes because they didn't know how to calculate a weighted average and you know they'll literally count like a single homework assignment equivalent to a final comprehensive exam just because they didn't really understand how the math worked obviously that wouldn't be a math instructor or a physics instructor but i've seen that happen before and uh that's why you should always make sure you know how to calculate a weighted average M make sure you know what your syllabus says and your instructor is not allowed to give you any grade lower than the syllabus uh, tells you. Okay. But yeah, I had to do that first person. 
Also, by the way, everybody, uh, sometimes my final is about 50-50 midterm chapters versus chapters since the midterm. Uh, this one is going to be probably comparable, if not even slightly heavier on the midterm. So uh, it might not be unreasonable if I had, say, 20 questions. It might be normal for me to have 12 of them from the midterm and uh, are from the midterm chapters and then the other eight from the chapters since then. So that sometimes happens too. And the best practice for this final would be this practice you have up on here that requires lockdown. Uh, no, no, not the one with the lockdown, just the one that I said, I think I wrote on a title take many times, but that practice final is always the practice is always the best thing. Uh, if you really wanted to dive into a particular chapter, then I'd go to those chapter tests that I put up or those chapter practices that I put up. Uh, that's if you've gotten to the point where, you know, taking the practice final involves too many things that you know well, whereas you've learned, well, crap, I don't think I understand relativity. So then you'd want to go to chapter 36 and just do relativity problems. Does that Thank make sense? You. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? All right. I have a question about yes, one of the questions on the um, practice final. Right. Okay. Um, you can share your screen if you'd like. I've set it where other people can share. I can do that. Give me one second. Uh, oh, there we go. Share screen. Okay. So this question number seven, mm -hmm. I just didn't know how to approach this question, so I didn't, I didn't even attempt it. I wasn't sure where to start. Okay, yeah. So this is one of those questions. And by the way, could you scroll down a little bit so I can show the students this uh, question right above it? Yes. So this question above it, question six, everybody, this is one of the ones I was telling you about that I thought was such a good problem where I could uh, get you guys to demonstrate your ability to uh, calculate a moment of inertia using an integral. Only it's not that hard. So that question six there, y'all might want to take a screenshot real quick. Now, regarding your question seven, and you can leave it right there because I can I can see what I need to from that question. On this one, Damien, what you're supposed to realize is uh, in chapters 14 and 15, I give you a model solution, if you will, of those differential equations that happen as a result of uh Initially, it's just a, a mass on a spring. Then it's a mass on a spring with friction. Then it's a mass on a spring uh, with a force uh, added to it and stuff like that. You don't have to know how to solve that equation, but you need to know what those solutions are in each ca case. In this case, for instance, the solution of the differential equation is X is equal to some amplitude times cosine omega T. Now, if you compare what I just said, X equals amplitude, which you can see is 17.4 centimeters, times cosine omega T, you'd see that the 5.46 reciprocal seconds is your omega. And omega is 2 pi times the frequency. So you already know omega there. It's 5.46. So if you take that and divide it by 2 pi, you'll get the actual frequency. Now, this one's asking, and there's a problem just like it asking for the frequency, but this one's asking for the period. But once you have the frequency, uh, the period is just one over that. So uh, you could solve that for the period and then divide one by that number, and that'll give you the frequency. Let me uh, take a second. Let's sit. I'm going to write this down real quick on this sheet, and then I'm going to steal the screen from you uh, so I can show you, because I know sometimes it's a little hard to talk are for you to follow me when I'm just talking. So I'm going to say X of T is equal to 17.4 centimeters times cosine of 5.46. And that's seconds to the negative one power times T. Okay, now I've gotten everything. So I need to steal the screen from you again.
So this is this is actually another wonderful problem. I like these. Same thing with the uh, chapter 15 problems where we're doing uh, waves as opposed to just a simple harmonic oscillator, which is like what this is. There you go. Okay, so what I've written down here is what they gave me. Okay, what they want to know is T equals question mark. What I was saying to you is that uh, those differential equations that they're they're the the differential equations are for a mass on a spring. It's also for a pendulum, and it's also for a uh, physical pendulum. So they all have the same solutions, and in this case, it's x of t is equal to a cosine omega t, and you often put plus phi just to account for whatever the initial conditions are. In this case, they've got a phi equal to zero, but what you see is that uh, comparing this equation, the x of t corresponds to that, the a corresponds to that, and the omega corresponds to that, but there's no addition going on there, so that means this quantity, the, the phase angle, is zero. So this tells you omega is equal to 5.46, and it might help you to think of it as radians per second because that's that's more or less what omega is. It's the angular velocity. Uh, plus, by thinking of it as radians per second, this formula just pops right out because it's 2 pi times f. f is measured in... You might think of it as revolutions per second. Can anybody tell me uh, how many radians is in one revolution? Two pi. Yeah, so you see that that's the whole reason why I tell you to think of omega as radians per second because you'll automatically come up with the omega equals two pi times f because it's just a conversion between revolutions per second to radians per second. Now, uh, because of that, we see F is equal to omega over 2 pi, and we know that period is 1 over the frequency, so you could say period is going to be 2 pi over omega. So that's 2 times 3.14159, say, divided by 5.46. And that's radians per second. And obviously, radian is, is, is literally a unit of like meters per meter. So it has no unit, to be honest with you. So a radian per second in the bottom makes it a second in the numerator. When I do this, I get 2 times 3.14159. And then I divide that by 5.46. And that gives me 1.15 seconds. Does that make sense, Damien? Does that make sense? Thank you. No problem. So uh, just as a follow-up to this, I want you guys to, to realize this. So when we're doing waves, we get, uh, well, I'll use the same terminology that they do in the book, D of X and T is equal to A times, let's say, cosine Kx minus omega t plus phi. That's the general solution of a wave equation, okay? If it's a pressure wave, then A will have units of uh, newtons per square meter, for instance, because that's, that's a unit of pressure. If it's an ocean wave, A will have units of, say, meters or feet or inches because, you know, that's an amplitude for a uh, water wave. Various other things have uh, wave characteristics as well. The other thing to remember is that K is 2 pi over the wavelength. And omega is 2 pi over the period. Of course, that also gives you omega is equal to 2 pi f, which we just used. And uh, one thing else that can help you is if you take the omega 
and divide it by K, that becomes two pi over the period divided by two pi over the wavelength, which is two pi over the period times the wavelength over two pi. And now you can see that the two pi's cancel out. And not only that, if you remember that F is equal to one over T, you can see that you get F times Lambda. So you know, excuse me, so you know the velocity is omega over k. So that's another feature about this, just looking at the form of the equation and being able to tell it uh, and then know what the speed is. Another thing you can do if you want to know, for instance, the speed of the wave, remember this graph of this wave would be something along this. So you could have like that. And for instance, cosine kx minus omega t could be like that. Uh, if I set kx minus omega t equal to zero, that would correspond to that little dot right there. So whatever is inside of the cosine you can set that equal to zero and then solve for X. And that will actually let you know uh, what the velocity is. So for instance, if I say K X minus Omega T equals zero, and you don't really have to set it to zero. You could set it to pi, in which case you'd be talking about that spot or pi over two. And you'd be talking about that spot or three pi over two or two pi. But the main thing is set it equal to a constant and then solve for K or excuse me, solve for X. And what you'll do is get a function of X. In other words, where is that particular spot on that particular wave going to be at any time T? Well, you can see this is going to be omega T. If I pull that to that side and then I divide it by K, uh, you can see that that's going to be omega over K times T. And what did I tell you? I told you that velocity was omega over K. And that's exactly what's happening there. Okay. If if you don't get it from there, you can also say V is dx dt. And when I take the derivative of that, I just get omega over K again. So there's another way to figure out the velocity of the wave. Uh, there's also one where your test or where your practice test, I think it's given something like X squared plus 2bxt plus t squared or bt squared like that. And they ask you for the velocity. Same thing. You're just going to set all this equal to zero and solve for and solve for x. And once you have X, you can either take the derivative like I did over here, or you can just look at it and compare it to a kinematic equation and you'll see what it is. Now, the other part I wanted to show you was just remind you that uh, for simple harmonic motion, you either get X of T or theta of T for the pendulum, doesn't matter. The main thing is you get one of those and that's equal to A, times cosine omega t plus phi. So when you actually look at a solution for a simple harmonic motion problem, you want to look for the coefficient of t, and that's going to be your omega, or you look for something that's being added to the thing multiplied by t, and that'll be your phase angle. So a lot of this is just about comparing the shape of your graph of your function or whatever to the shape that they give you. That's just like we did in uh, our labs when we consistently used Y equals MX plus B. If you say F is equal to KX, you guys should be able to tell uh, when you graph F on the vertical axis and X on the horizontal axis, you should be able to tell how K is related to the graph. If you can't, then you're sort of missing a major, major mathematical point. Does that make sense?
All right. Any other questions? No more? All right. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and let you guys go. I want you all to do really wonderfully on your final. Uh, this is your, you know, chance to erase all the bad things that have happened. If you, you know, if you, if you missed a test or uh, if you had to check out a little bit and missed three homework assignments, your last chance to fix all that is by doing well in the final. And the best way you can prepare to do well in the final is make sure you take that practice final a bunch of times uh, and 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 not just do it in such a way that you try to, you know, learn what the results are, because literally there's sometimes there's four and five questions that look identical, but there's like one or two words different. So if you're trying to rely on memory of the answers from from seeing a bunch of tests, you could actually be harmed. <laughs> OK, so you, you want to use this as a chance to solve the problems and figure out how to solve the problems by all means, you know, get get a study group together, work with your friends or, or ask me or whatever. And, uh, you know, just learn how to do these problems and you'll be in a good spot. OK. All right. Well, I'll let everybody go. Uh, I'll wait for the last person to exit and then I will cancel out. So you have a good one, everybody. Good luck on your final. Thank you. You're welcome, Taylor. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Tom, did you have anything for your split, buddy? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, something but uh, is gone now. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to remember yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I was exactly. listening to you and then, you know, it's gone. <laughs> so now uh, we, we have like... Uh, uh, what I wanted to ask is like, okay, uh, we have some work, homework that I do, like on the theory. Uh huh. All like everything is gonna be in the final. Like all the chapters is gonna be on the final. No, just one battles. through eleven, fourteen, fifteen, and thirty six. Okay, one through eleven. Mm hmm. Fourteen and fifteen. And, and 36, 36, which is the relativity. Okay, so 9 and 10 are not in the final. Nope. Oh, oh no, it's 1 through 11. Oh, no, 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 so no, nine no. And 1, 1 to 11. Okay, 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 sorry. <laughs> are you counting and, in a different uh, order than I am? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, you know, I'm working so hard this couple of days. Well, you seem to be doing uh, all right, so I think you'll, you'll be fine, Kamala. <laughs> all right. But I don't see the final, the practice final in... Uh, on my canvas. Okay, well, let me check that. I'll, uh, make sure I haven't neglected something. I'm pulling it up right now. I'm looking at uh, the modules. So, yes, if you look in your modules, there's a module called Practice Tests. Yes. And uh, there's one that says, so actually, there's two up there, and I don't know why kind of confused about this there's one that says december 5th that's not supposed to be there at all but i don't think it'll let me hide it let me see let me see if i can just nope it will not let me hide it okay so the one at the very bottom says pfe chapter 1 to 11 14 15 36 why is that say 43 uh let me check this real quick I tell you no, what mine doing. is only the one that is required to respond this uh, lockdown. That's the only one that is on mine. Yeah, I'm looking at that now, and I don't know why it's showing something odd like that. So let me, I'm going to share the screen with you so you can look at and see it, the same thing I'm seeing. So okay. you see this, this is what I expected it to be. Let me double check here. What I'm going to do is see if this does have 43. I'm wondering if maybe I had done that, but I forgot to erase the name. Nope, it looks like I've got a chapter 43 in there. Have you done this one at all? Oh, it, it doesn't show. It doesn't? It doesn't show on mine. I can share my screen to let you see what I have here. 
this is this is jack. so let me see oh uh, the online test on yours so you have the final exam for it that's not supposed to be there either well okay. i don't even know how this stuff got visible why why is that there yeah mine i don't have the final the one you're talking about that uh -huh. see it. yeah well let me fix that I don't even know what happened. Midterm retest. Let me see if it's in the assignment. Sometimes I make them and it, uh, I put them somewhere, but they always are available in the assignments. Let me check in here and see what's happened. So there's conceptual. There's that. There's this. Nope, it's not there either. Yeah, that's the question I wanted to ask. And then, you know, I I, I paid attention to what you were saying and then uh, I forgot. Forgot, yeah. Well, that's something I got to fix. So let me let me do that. And I'm probably going to allow you guys to uh, wait even till Friday and take it just to make up for my, my screw up. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, don't know why nobody it on has time no question. More, what's that now? I said, I don't know why nobody asked. It's just like showing for me. It's not showing for me or is everybody, everybody else? No, I think you're in the same boat as everybody else. Uh, I, I'm surprised if you don't see this one or the one that I showed you on my modules. You should see this guy right here. Yeah, that's the only Actually, one I not see. Not that one. Uh, However, that is, no, that's the other one. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, you should be able to see this one, but that's just not the right one. That was not the one that you're supposed to be having access to. So I've got to put another one there. I don't know if I pulled it from the wrong place and it got taken away, but I'll do that. Just watch out. I have an email. Uh, I'll be sending out an email uh, and letting y'all know about that, okay? Okay, so uh, people that want to take it to, I mean, Wednesday still can take it on Wednesday. Yeah, I'll definitely let you still take it on Wednesday, but I'm probably going to allow you to, to wait until as late as Friday to do it since I've screwed this okay. up. Okay. Thank you. You're I'll welcome. See you, Sorry about that, and thank you. <laughs> no problem. Bye-bye.